This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I'm doing some beginning machine knitting lessons. And the next lesson is how to bind off with a tapestry needle after taking the knitting off on waste yarn. This is a good one where it's, it's wise to plan ahead. I need enough yarn coming from here to go across the knitting at least three times for the sewing part of the job. So I need at least this much, this much, this much, but heck, I'll just make sure I have plenty. So I'm cutting kind of a long piece of yarn to sew with later. That's just a little plan ahead step so that there's one less end to deal with when finishing the project. Now I need to knit eight or nine rows of a contrasting yarn that will be discarded later. We call this waste knitting or waste yarn because I'm going to unravel it and throw it away after I've bound off. It is simply acting as a stitch holder. So I'm going to thread that and knit eight or nine rows. You might have noticed that the yarn I'm using isn't terribly thick for this machine. I think it's a great idea when you're a beginner to use a thinner yarn than you think your machine will take. So if you're using one of these bulky machines, go ahead and use a sport weight yarn. Certainly do not use anything thicker than a worsted weight, or Americans often call it a four-ply yarn. And you don't want a really stiff, scratchy four-ply yarn. You want one that isn't too, too thick and too stiff. But beginning with sport weight yarn on a bulky machine is a great idea. On a standard machine, begin with lace weight yarn or baby yarn at the thickest. Of course, it will take sport yarn, but it, when you're a beginner, make your life a lot simpler by not trying to use too heavy of a yarn for the machine. Now, I'm just going to take this off by knitting across with it empty, no yarn in the feeder, because I cut the waist yarn, so I had to catch it and I'm taking it off the comb. I'm going to get it into the center of the camera's field of vision and just sort of roll it so that you can see these white stitches so that they really stand out. And then I'm going to sew this with a tapestry needle. So let me get my tapestry needle. The easy way to thread a tapestry needle is to take the thread and fold it over the needle and pinch it between thumb and forefinger, remove the needle, and then squash it through the needle's eye. This is a very, very simple stitch. The only thing about this that you need to keep in mind is that you want to keep it loose enough because I'm not on the needles, so I don't have the needles showing me how far apart to put the stitches. So I'm going to go in the second stitch and out the first, then in the third stitch and out the second, in the fourth stitch, out the third, in the fifth stitch, out the fourth, That is really all there is to this bind off. I have seen this little back stitch technique used for all sorts of things. For attaching a neckline, for instance, that's been folded over and fastened down. I'm being a little bit careful not to be too tight. Absolutely every kind of knitting that, that you sew up, you're constantly thinking, oh, I don't want to be too tight because I won't get the nice even tension that I get if I yank things too tightly. Now I am left-handed. If I were right-handed, I would either start on the other end or I might do this. So you'll bear with me because I won't go as fast with my right hand. But I'll go in the next stitch and back the last in the next stitch and back to the last
we lefties sometimes forget that it's hard for right-handed people who haven't spent their whole lifetime reversing every kind of direction to reverse things. So let me show you this right-handed. I keep catching this end. And I just sort of curl this so I can see the stitches. not the most coordinated person with the right hand. There we go. Get the next one. This is forward one into a new hole and then back into the hole that has already been used once. So at the end of the of the sewing every single stitch has had the needle go through it twice, except the last stitch. Okay, so I've bound off. I'll remove the tapestry needle. And I'm going to unravel the scrap yarn. Unravel it and throw it away. This is how it looks on the knit side. This is how it looks on the purl side. If you wanted it to look the opposite way, if you wanted this on the knit side, then you would just do your sewing from the knit side. So that is the tapestry needle bind off using waist yarn.